come across this kind of when a composer is explaining its piece? I build upon the so-called interactions of serialist non-linearities and transform them into what I term semiotic Stockhausen-esque transcription polyphonies, which I see as a distinct improvement. My newest piece creates, cultivates and site-specifically challenges a massive variety of bitonal continuity <laughs> Well, I'm not that pretentious, self-indulgent The way I see it, when you're not in an academic environment, you should try to explain things in the best and most understandable manner, and not just to sound pompous and sophisticated. What I find most interesting about isorhythms and melody accompaniment is the challenge of working on independence. This is combining a memorable melody with an interesting accompaniment, working on them individually and then as one. As a person who studied classical guitar, I didn't come across many many pieces with this kind of technique. Obviously, conservatoires are named as they are because they have a strong root in earlier music. Thus, the repertoire is strongly biased towards a certain amount of renowned composers and pieces. But first of all, what is an isorhythm? The prefix iso comes from the Greek equal. Therefore, an isorhythm is a musical technique which employs a repeating rhythmic pattern in at least one of the voices throughout a composition. Obviously, there are infinite possibilities for isorhythms. They are often used to distinguish different voices within a composition, and this is a technique that can be found throughout many musical genres, not just classical music. Back to guitar and isorhythms, the combination of patterns are endless. However, I would suggest the following rule when working on both accompaniment and melody. This rule is simple. The harder you make one part, the easier you have to make its counterpart. This will help the listener in identifying each part within the auditory scene. A lot of people work really, really hard for their dreams, but it's not meant for everybody. That's why you use auto-tune and I don't. It will obviously make it better and more enjoyable for the player. Much like playing piano or drums, it is super beneficial to train the brain and body to play rhythmically independent things at the same time. This will surely help and broaden your landscape of compositional possibilities. A common practice when using isorhythms is to repeat a pattern which has a different meter than the underlying time signature. For instance, this would happen when you have a repeating pattern in 3-4 inserted into a composition that has a common 4-4 time signature. This means that the first note of the pattern will land on the first note of the time signature every 12 beats. Now, as you can see in this diagram, this is the pattern that is going to be repeated throughout the piece. It consists of a quaver, followed by two semiquavers, where the second is tied to the first semiquaver of the following beat. That semiquaver is then followed by another semiquaver and one last quaver, thus completing the rhythmic pattern. Additionally, an interesting thing is that if you compare both beats, the second one is mirroring the first one. Having this pattern on mind, we will use it as our accompaniment, following always the same sequence of strings. This sequence is 6th string, 4th string, 5th string, and 1st string. So every time this sequence of 4 strings is played, it will start again. To add some interest, I added a little accent each time the 4th note of the string sequence is played. In this case, the high E. And as you can see, the appearance of this high E will shift 
through the bars. To take a break from too much theory, this is how the pattern sounds when played on its own. The melody is quite simple. The idea is to make it understandable and easy to follow. This will help the listener better differentiate the melody from the accompaniment. Now the melody. It repeats twice almost identically, with a little exception in the very last bar. A bar where a subtle suspension is incorporated to add just a nice detail. And now, both together. Wish me luck! Well, that's a little part of the whole piece. I didn't want to go into too much detail of it because I'd rather focus on the compositional technique. I encourage you to try and compose having this in mind. If you're both composer and performer, this will be a super rewarding experience as you'll be able to listen how both parts work together. You made it to the end of the video, so salute! As a present of yourself to yourself, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If not, this baby Mozart's gonna feel very, very bad.